I 100% believe the words to that song. And then there are the other 364 days of the year in 23 hours. <laughs> so just by show of hands here, how many of you would say that that song represents the way that you think all of the time? No hands. Oh, I saw one there. Does anybody ever call you disillusioned? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because that song represents those times in our lives when we feel like we can overcome anything, or like our perspective is bigger. And I don't know about you, but those times for me are pretty darn rare. I would say what's more true for me is a feeling that something just isn't quite right in my life. And sometimes it's an actual problem that I can name, but more often than not, it's this feeling in the pit of my belly that something has to change. Can anyone here relate to that? Yeah? Well, Father Jimmy Tompkins, who was a pioneer of the cooperative movement, called this feeling seeing a ghost. And what it is, is destiny telling you it's time to make a change. And it can manifest in a number of different ways. It could be via something tragic, such as a relationship ending or getting laid off from your job. Or it could be something wonderful. It could be a glimpse of what could be if you just made a change. Anyway, it manifests. Once you've seen a ghost, your life is never the same. Any, anybody here maybe living with a ghost right now? Oh, good hands, yeah. I suspect there might be quite a few of us. So my ghost came in 2007, and I was pretty darn content with life at the time. I was an actor in kind of the minor, minor league theater. I was a playwright, so I had one silly, happy play under my belt. But one day I opened a book called Father Jimmy, and my life changed forever. And the story was, in 1935, in the little coal mining village of Reserve Mines in Cape Breton, Nova Scotia, the miners were completely in the clutches of the coal company. At the end of the week, they often owed more to the company than they made. But all of this was to change when a man named Father Jimmy Tompkins strode into town. There he is right there. Pleasant looking, isn't he? <laughs> and Father Jimmy Tompkins fiercely believed that education, cooperation, and community are the keys to freedom. And he set about getting people to become masters of their own destiny by doing what he did best, nagging people to death. Or he put them on the spot. He would do things like, you, right there, what are your worst problems? One of them have red hair, standing on a stage looking at? Yeah, <laughs> I thought so. But you know what? Father Jimmy's methods worked. And pretty soon, in this tiny little community of 800 people, they had started the first credit union in English Canada, one of the first cooperative stores in Atlanta, Canada, and the first cooperative housing project in North America called Tompkinsville. And in their midst was a miner named Joe Laban. And Joe had a grade three education, but he also had a photographic memory. And Father Jimmy seized upon this, and he made Joe one of his right-hand men. And Joe went on to lead cooperatives all over Canada, and he wrote the book on cooperative housing. But in the 1970s, CBC Radio asked Joe, Mr. Laban, in the face of all you've achieved, is there anything that you regret? And he said, yes, our one regret is we didn't teach the young. 
Well, I am a third generation native of Reserve Mines, Nova Scotia. I'm Joe Laven's great niece, and I didn't know this story. So that was my ghost. I knew that this story would be perfect for the stage. I could see it up there, a play called Tompkinsville. But I also knew any playwright will tell you that writing a historical play is a huge endeavor. And I was pretty sure I didn't have either the skills or the talent to do this story justice. But then I got Father Jimmy. Sir, you know how you felt a few minutes ago when I put you on the spot? That was this man's specialty. And he managed to do it to me from beyond the grave. So I was sitting around one day feeling gloriously sorry for myself when I read about a time when the miners were sitting around feeling gloriously sorry for themselves. And Father Jimmy got in the middle of them and he started screaming, what are you people doing? You have to live dangerously and pray furiously. Do you want to know what I think the matter is? I think that the problem here is that people in Nova Scotia just don't dare. Well, Father Jimmy, I'm from Nova Scotia and I have red hair and nobody tells me that I don't dare. So, I decided to further my storytelling skills, and I think it was just to spite him, actually. Um, I applied to a Master's of Acting program at the Liverpool Institute for Performing Arts in Liverpool, England. It was founded by Paul McCartney, and when you graduate, he gives you your degree. <laughs> go big or go home. <laughs> I got accepted, which was great, but the the problem was that for an international student, this program costs tens of thousands of dollars. And so the start date was quickly approaching and I thought, you know what, I, I just can't go. But then I read about a time when the mines were shut down to two shifts a week and the miners and their families were starving. And Father Jimmy took to the streets screaming, you people don't need money. What you need is food. So at his prodding, the people of Reserve Mines started a 75-acre cooperative garden. And that story sparked something in me. I thought, what I need is not actually money. What I need is a place to stay while I'm studying. So I wrote to six theater companies in Liverpool, and I told them that I would do funding work for them in exchange for a place to live. And three said yes. I was off to England. So what I learned from that is living dangerously is about daring to consider a new way of doing things. Father Jimmy said that the solution to a problem can be found at the root of the problem itself. It's asking yourself, what do I actually need to make this happen? Your first answer will probably be money, but what's your second answer? What's a way of looking at this and of getting your needs met? by examining the problem itself differently. If it helps, you can picture him screaming at you. Helps me. Um, so when I got to Liverpool, it, it was great that I was living dangerously. But when I got to Liverpool, everything